So this video came about today because uh, I was out hiking and uh, you know sometimes you drift and talk about different things and, and we were on the trail and this guy was calling uh, Putin a warmonger and you know and all this stuff. I said, well, you know, I said you do know why you know Russia invaded Ukraine, don't you? And, and he's like, because they're, they're imperialists. They're, they want to take Ukraine. I said, well, I you know maybe so, but I said uh, there were a lot of other things going on. I said, you know, there was the coup back in 2014, and you know, and then I went on to explain things. And to to this person's credit, uh, they listened. And uh, I think they walked away a little bit more knowledgeable about what the situation was and why what happened happened, okay? Whether you want to condemn Russia or, or praise Russia, I don't care. I'm not, I got no bone. I'm kind of like uh, Scott Ritter. I got no bone in this game. I'm just trying to, to explain to you. And then so coming home, I'm listening to the um, uh, um, Todd Stearns show. Or Todd, Todd, Todd Starnes. Is it Todd Stearns? Anyway, I like listening to him. He's out of Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, and so he got on the radio, and he goes, uh, somebody out there, you know, please call in and explain to me why Russia invaded Ukraine. Now, I don't know if he was being sarcastic or, or rather he was really reaching out. And I thought, you know what, this is like twice in one day that people are trying to understand. And I mean, that's in two people's credit, you know, that – you know, they don't know the background. They don't understand uh, what was happening and why Russia felt it had to do what it did. And so I thought, you know, I'll go home and I'll write up a big, you know, explanation to, to the Todd Starnes show and, and send I'm sure he's got like an email address. And I thought about it. And then I thought, <clears throat> no, let's let, uh, sorry, my, <coughs> I got uh, from the hike today, pollen in my throat. Let's just let Putin explain it to you himself. Um, boy, I tell you, it is hard, hard, hard to find Putin's speech. It's being erased from the Internet. Uh, and, man, I had to look around this. I finally found this on Rumble. Uh, I couldn't find it. Well, Sky News had a version of it. Uh, but then, you know, you got commercials in there. And I'm not even sure if I'm supposed to show commercials. <clears throat> I mean, I'm not getting any money from them, of course. And I was like, well, wait, there's got to be a, a copy of the speech on Rumble. So let's let Putin or the translator. And this, one of the things I don't like about this, I like it when people translate and you can hear, you know, the Russian speaking in the background. But this version is just the translator. Now, we have to take you know, we have to hope that the translator's translating everything correctly, uh, which having listened to the speech with both, and of course I'm not another translator, it, it seems pretty accurate to me. But let's let Putin explain why Russia invaded Ukraine for for the 17 people that watch my videos. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Dear members of State Duma, Senators, dear citizens of Russian Federation, in today's address, I am, I, I, I am giving this state address in a very difficult uh, context and a very difficult time. Uh, there are cardinal major changes in, uh, in the world. There are historic changes that determine the future of our country and our people. Every one of us has uh, a great responsibility about a year ago in order to protect our people on our historic land, in order to uh, ensure security, in order to liquidate the threat that uh, appeared from the Kiev regime after the military coup in uh, 2014, we decided to conduct a special military operation step by step we will continue to resolve the objectives that are before us. Starting from 2014, Donbass has been fighting um, to defend its right to live on its territory and speak its own language. They were fighting and not giving up in the conditions of a blockade and constant shelling. And in the context of uh, um, complete hatred from the Kiev regime, they waited and they believed that the Russia would come to their help. You know this very well, that we did everything possible 
indeed everything possible in order to resolve this problem in a peaceful way. We were patient in our negotiations uh, to come out of this horrible conflict. However, behind our backs, a completely different scenario was being prepared. The uh, assurances from the Western leaders to uh, ensure peace in Donbass turned out to be a lie. They were just dragging time and they were trying to close their eyes to the political killings and repressions of the Kiev regime and uh, abuse of uh, uh, religion and terrorist acts in Donbass. In Western academies and uh, training centers, they were training nationalist units and supplying weapons. I would like to emphasize that it was before the special military operation they were negotiating the uh, supply of uh, heavy military equipment and planes and uh, anti-aircraft defense systems. And they were also publicly talking about supply of nuclear weapons. NATO and Western countries were setting their military bases on our borders and uh, biological laboratories and they were training uh, on the future theater of military actions. And today they recognize this. They publicly recognize this without shying away. They, they are uh, talking about Minsk agreements and Normand, Normand agreement uh, to be a, a, just a show, a spectacle. And when Russia, I would like to emphasize when Russia sincerely tried to find a peaceful solution, they were playing with lives of people and they were playing a dirty game. And this uh, repulsive uh, lie and their behavior, two-faced behavior, uh, was seen in Yugoslavia, in uh, Iraq, Syria, and they will not be able to um, wash away that chain ever. Of uh, centuries of uh, colonialism and dictatorship, they used to this idea that they could do anything, that they it turns out that they are treating their own people in this way. They also uh, deceive their own people by telling them stories about uh, peaceful agreements in Donbass. And uh, it's just total and uh, unprincipled lies. We have been uh, insisting on protecting our own interests and also that uh, protecting the position that uh, there should not be a situation in the world where there are civilized countries and the rest of the world. We were very open and we were sincerely open for a dialogue with the West and we were insisting on Europe and the rest of the world to have a uh, an equal system of defense, an equal system of security. We were proposing to our partners this idea and in response we were getting uh, dishonest answers. But there were also specific actions, expansion of NATO to our borders, creation of uh, new anti-rocket defense systems in Europe and developing military contingents on the borders of Russia and I'd like to emphasize that no other country in the world has as many foreign military bases as the United States. They have hundreds, hundreds of military bases around the world. The whole uh, planet is dotted with their bases and we saw them exit fundamental agreements on limiting rockets of medium to long range and they were exiting other agreements supporting peace in the world. They were doing it for a reason and in December 2021 
we officially directed to the US and to Europe our request for guarantees for security. However, we received a direct uh, refusal to our offers and uh, it became clear that the reaction uh, was demonstrated and the threat was growing and we had no doubt that by February 2022 everything was prepared for a punitive action in Donbass uh, where Kiev regime um, provided artillery uh, and uh, aviation and uh, other weapons to, to attack Donbass back in 2014. In 2015, they attempted again directly uh, to directly attack Donbass. They continued shelling uh, terror in relation to citizens. All of this was completely against the documents that were accepted by the uh, United Nations uh, Security Council. I would like to repeat, they started the war and we used the force in order to stop it. Those who planned a new attack on Donetsk, on Donbass, on Lugansk, they clearly understood that the next objective is strike against Sevastopol and Crimea. We understood this and they are again in Kiev talking directly uh, about uh, their plans and we knew that already. We protect people and protect their homes and the objectives of the West uh, is uh, infinite power. They spend 150 billion dollars to support militarily Kiev regime. To compare uh, this, to put this into perspective, in 2021-2022, uh, the big seven countries uh, provided to the poorest countries only 60 billion uh, aid. Also, they, and in exchange for that 60 billion, they require a complete, sub complete submission to their will. With this, the flow of money to finance the war is not stopping and they continue supplying uh, means to provide uh, goods in other countries. And at the recent security conference, there was an endless flow of accusations against Russia. And this was done, it seems, in order for everyone to forget that over the last 10 years, it was the West who opened, uh, who released the genie from the bottle as a result of wars. We did not come up with these figures. Uh, these figures are provided by them as a result of uh, wars uh, that were started by United States since 2021. About 900,000 people died and millions became refugees and they're trying to delete this from the memory of uh, people. They're trying to pretend this did not happen, but nobody forgot that. The people's tragedy is not important to them, and they are betting trillions, trillions of dollars, and they are trying to continue robbing everyone else, and they are covering themselves with words of democracy and values. They are trying to label uh, other countries and publicly insult them. And they are creating that image of enemy within their own countries in order to divert attention from corruption scandals within their own countries. And they are diverting attention from the growing uh, social economic uh, problems. I would like to remind you that in 1930s, Western countries opened the path for uh, Nazi Germany uh, to develop and in this century they, they did this to Ukraine and anyone who knows history 
um, um, knows that this goes back to the 19th uh, century uh, Austrian-Hungarian uh, Empire, and this was they only had the only uh, single goal to separate these territories from um, their historic ties with our country. There's nothing new. Everything is repeating. History keeps repeating. They have supported the coup in 2014, and this was a bloody coup, anti-state, anti-constitution coup, and as if nothing had happened. And they even told us how much money they spent on it. The ideological uh, basis for this was Russophobia, and they were... It's a shame to to even say that uh, one of the units of the uh, Ukrainian army was given a name Edelweiss. Edelweiss is a is a name of uh, of a, a German a Nazi uh, German unit, and they have they have uh, very popular chevrons on their uniform uh, with the German Nazi insignia. And they've got very marked signs on their tanks, and they the neo neo Nazis are not even hiding uh, who they inherited their history from. And we see that those in power choose to close their eyes on this. Why? Because they don't give a damn. Because they they are trying to fight us. They're trying to fight Russia. And that means they want to use anything. They want to use everyone, terrorists, uh, Nazis, even devil himself, to use it as weapon against Russia. The project anti-Russia is a revanchist um, policy against our uh, country. In the, back in the 30s of uh, last century and today, it's the same idea to direct aggression to the East, to start the war in Europe using other people's uh, uh, tools. And we, we said that we're not fighting in Ukraine. We said that the Ukrainian people have become hostages of their Western masters who occupied this country in, in political, in economic and military sense. Of, uh, uh, decades they were destroying Ukrainian industry and robbing the country and as a consequence of this it became the, the uh, poverty and social division grew and this was the material for the military actions and of course they turned these people into cannon f fodder and this is a sad reality but it's a fact the responsibility for starting the conflict, for growing number of victims, lies totally with the West and with the Kiev regime, for whom Ukrainian people are not their own, effectively. This regime is not serving their national interests, they are serving interests of foreign powers. The uh, Ukraine is, is now like a training ground for them. Um, I'm not going to talk about the plans of Western powers to increase military aid. Everyone knows about this. But one thing is, is uh, very clear to everyone. The, the greater the range of these uh, systems, the further away we will be forced to move the threat from our borders. The elites of the West are not hiding their goals. They are, as they say, trying to inflict a strategic um, defeat on Russia. What does that mean to us? That means they want to end with Russia. They want to turn a local conflict into a phase of a, a global conflict. This is how we understand this. And this and we will react in an appropriate way. Because in this case, we're talking about existence of our country. 
they also have to take into account that it is impossible to defeat Russia on the battlefield. So they increase their information attacks and of course um, they are targeting our young generation and of course they, are, they keep lying here. They are twisting historic facts. They're not, uh, they're not, they are going against our culture, against our um, religious organizations. Look at what they've done to their own people. They're destroying family, national identity. They are uh, abusing their children. Uh, you know, even pedophilia is, is uh, announced as a normal thing in the West. And they are, they're recognizing same-sex marriages. That's fine. That, they're, they're adults. They've got the right to live their life. And we always were very tolerant about this in Russia. Nobody is trying to enter private lives of people, and we're not going to do this. However, we need to tell them, but look at the scriptures of uh, any uh, religion in the world. Everything is said in there. And one of the things is that uh, family is a union of a man and a woman. But even these sacred texts are subjected to doubt. And Anglican Church is planning to consider the idea of a gender-neutral God. What can you say here? Millions of people in the West understand that they are being led to uh, spiritual destruction. Elites are going crazy. And this cannot be cured, it seems. But our duty is to protect our children. And we will do this. We will protect our children from degradation. It's obvious that the West will continue trying to destabilize our society. They, they, uh, they'll be using our traitors uh, who've been throughout the ages, had the same attitude to their own people, hatred for their own nation. And this uh, was the, the case forever. Uh, they are uh, attempting uh, terrorist attacks that are that are uh, aimed at destabilizing our society, but we will never be similar to Western uh, regimes and uh, to Kiev regime, uh, who, used, who are used to witch hunting. We're not going to hunt those who betrayed their motherland. Let them live with this. They have to live with it. What's important is that citizens of Russia have to give them a moral uh, valuation. We need to be proud that we are uh, a, a multicultural nation and majority of our people have a principal position in relation to the special military operation. They understand the meaning of it. They supported our actions in Donbass and uh, real patriotism was seen in, in this support and historically uh, this has always been a feature of our nation. Everyone, everyone understands uh, the connection of their personal uh, life to the life of, of their motherland. Dear friends, I'd like to thank everyone, all people of Russia, for decisiveness and for their heroic attitude. I'd like to thank our officers of uh, Navy and Army and all the forces to the fighters of uh, Donbass and Lugansk region, to volunteers who are fighting in uh, um, different areas and bars as well. Uh, I apologize that I will not be able to name everyone when I 
was preparing this speech, there was a long, long list of heroic uh, units, military units. I will not be able to name all of them. I did not want to offend anyone but not by not naming them. I would like to bow down to um, relatives and wives and parents and wives and and families and doctors and instructors, nurses who are saving the wounded, to the railroad uh, workers, construction workers who are creating the uh, defense structures and also building uh, homes and uh, engineers of defense factories who are working several shifts now to agricultural workers who are supplying a uh, constant stream of uh, uh, food and products. I would like to thank teachers who are sincerely taking care of the new generation of Russians, especially those who are working in very difficult conditions near to the front line. Mm, all the uh, cultural figures who come to the front line, to, who come to the hospitals to support them to journalists, uh, first of all, military journalists who are risking their lives in order to tell the truth to the whole world, uh, representatives of, uh, um, of, uh, of re traditional religions who are supporting uh, the military, entrepreneurs, um, government officials, everyone who is fulfilling their um, national and human duty. I would like to express special gratitude to uh, citizens of uh, Lugansk and Donetsk uh, republics and Zaporozhye region. You yourselves determined your future. You made your choice despite the threats of terror of the Nazis. Even though next to you there were military action uh, actions taking place and you made the choice to be together with russia to be together with your motherland we have started and we will continue to grow I'd like to emphasize that this reaction of our audience addressed to the citizens of Donetsk and Lugansk and Zaporozhye and Kherson regions. Um, we bow down to you. We, we began and we will continue our program of social restoration of, and of these territories and the idea is to bring back the factories and the uh, and the industry and we will uh, create uh, access to our internal sea now as of sea we will uh, create the new highway to Crimea and connect it to the rest of Russia and all regions of Russia are providing direct support to cities and towns of Donetsk and Lugansk and other regions and they're doing it as real brothers and sisters together today we're together again and that means we're stronger again and that means we're going to do everything in order to bring our length back to peace in order and to ensure security it is for this for our ancestors, for the future of our children and grandchildren, in order to restore historic justice. This is what uh, our fighters are fighting for, and our heroes are fighting for. I would like to, to, uh, to uh, respect the memory of all people, of all uh, fighters who died in military action and all civilians who died uh, uh, in this military action.
Thank you. We understand that it is very hard for wives and uh, daughters and sons of uh, of our uh, military personnel. They have uh, uh, brought up very decent uh, defenders, uh, just like our ancestors were defending Donbass, and they. They have got a very strong spirit and our duty is to support those families who lost loved ones and help them uh, bring up their children. The family of every member of the special military operation needs to be surrounded with care and attention and... Uh... All right, I'll <clears throat> go ahead and end the uh, my cut of the speech uh right there and anyway i did want to go back and just cover just a little bit of the historical context uh you know when gorbachev was in um, the agreement was that nato wouldn't expand and uh the west uh then they 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 violated that agreement and, and they started moving east with nato and they kept encroaching and they kept encroaching and now now we're looking at finland and sweden becoming part of NATO and and the and Putin drew a red line in the sand he says we will not accept NATO well they tried to annex Georgia okay and and Putin we put one in and and fought him fought NATO in uh, in Georgia and so he said he he drew the red line he says if you try to annex the nations cuz NATO was meant to be a defensive organization it was never meant to be an offensive organization and nor was it by agreement with Gorbachev way back in the day when, when the Soviet Union dissolved and they were weak, you know, the United States and the um, Western nations felt like, oh, this is an opportunity for us to expand our, our, our horizon, you know, to annex countries and, and encroach further and further and closer and closer to Russia. And, uh, and so I'm just kind of giving you the background on this thing. And so... I figured, what better way to explain why Russia invaded Ukraine, uh, whether you think it's right or wrong, than just let Putin explain it himself. Uh, so, I don't know, there was, uh, I had some other thoughts on this video. Uh, oh, yeah, and, and you remember when he was talking about, um, uh, in, the, in his speech, how, you know, I, and I've showed you videos of, of a lot of the uh, entertainers right there on the front lines with the troops down in the, uh, uh, in, you know, uh, right, right on the front lines w with the troops, you know, not on stages and, you know, in safe places. They're going up and, and putting their lives on the line to entertain the troops. I thought that was very impressive. And, of course, he was talking about the nurses and the doctors. Now, I haven't seen videos of, of that. I, I wish... RT or Russian television or even uh, some of the channels that I or the places that I go to find news would, would talk about those things. I haven't seen anything on that, but I assume why would he lie? I mean, I, I'm sure there's a huge medical corps that's uh, that's up in, in the probably dangerous situations on the front lines. Uh, and then let's see. Well, besides the entertainers, what else did I see? Uh, anyway, uh, I just thought that was uh, very uh touching uh that you know we've seen that and of course uh, anyway over the course of the war it's uh, it's heartbreaking and so many ukrainians are dying oh uh and i was going to get into this and maybe i might do another video tonight i don't think so I, i'm pretty baked after my hike today <laughs> but uh, i i did want to point out that we have entered a new phase in the war um that i'm seeing uh, Russia is, uh, they're, they're dropping the, uh, the cluster bombs now, uh, to break up the, uh, the, the trenches and stuff because they're able to fly, uh, cause it looks like Ukraine's, uh, air defenses are, uh, they're pretty wrecked at this point. I mean, I'm sure there's, there's still got something left, but, uh, it, I don't think Russia would be this bold uh, with their air force, uh, if Ukraine, I mean, certainly they couldn't have done this at the beginning of the war. Uh, but they have stepped up the uh, bombing campaign, and those are bunker busters. Uh, and if you've ever 
like when I was over in Iraq, the Iraqis had these uh, these huge concrete bunkers where they thought their planes would be safe. In the United States, or you know, we developed these these huge bombs that we would drop, and it just blew right through those bunkers and destroyed everything in them. Well, that's kind of what's dropping right now on uh, on the Ukraine trenches and stuff. So that's their 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 covered positions are not going to protect them anymore. Not at this phase in the war. And that's a, that was another thing I wanted to point out was that the the gloves. I I just want to. I mean, I the gloves have come off, and and in more gloves are off whenever you're even shooting at anybody. But I mean, at this point, I, I just think Russia is. They've had it. They they're not going to try to protect the Ukrainians anymore. Um, we're going to see a lot more death. Uh, a lot of. I mean, there's going to be a lot of death. Let's just put it that way, because these these huge bombs. Uh, they're, they're, they can't survive in those trenches with these things being dropped on them. And then I saw another video, uh, I think it was before I went hiking this morning, and uh, they said that the Russians are using flamethrowers. And, uh, and boy, if you ever watched those in uh, uh, World, was it World War II, uh, where they would come, well, yeah, it, that was in Japan, and they, they would come up and they would, uh, the U.S. soldiers would get close to those, uh, those concrete bunkers, and then they would, they stick the flamethrower through the little uh, hatch and burn the uh, Japanese inside those uh, those silos. Well, it's kind of the same thing. So this this tells me that Russia's done trying to take it easy on this uh, this conflict. Seems to me that they're just going to um, obliterate what's left. I mean, uh, okay, if you want to listen to your Western media, you know, MSDNC, CBS, ABC. Uh, Sky News, uh, you name it, BBC, uh, go ahead and listen to them. Uh, we'll see who's right uh, in the end. I've been, I've been watching this thing and following it way too closely to not tell you that uh, uh, a lot of Ukrainians are dying at this point, and I'm sorry that that's happening. And we need to end this war, and we also need to, to put together a peace treaty <clears throat> with, uh, or, I mean, a, a nuclear arms uh, treaty uh, to, to get back to weapons inspection and and, and disarmament. But uh, that ain't going to happen under the warmongering Democrats. Now, I decided some but people have been complaining. You talk about warmongering. I said, well, they got Diablos. So I guess I'll change it for everybody who listens to my videos. The warmongering Democrats and the Diablos, Democrats in label only, or rhinos, if you want to call them that, the warmongering Democrats, Diablos, and of course, the e I, but I'm sorry, I got to keep it just Democrat for the eco-terrorist, uh, bio-terrorist. That's, that's Democrats as far as I can tell. I, I'm sure the rhinos are involved there. All right, so peace out. Stay free. If I come up with uh, anything else I think you want to see or want to know, I'll cover it in the video. I, I, I wish I could have gotten uh, a copy of the speech where it just had the words, and I was going to just read you the subtitles uh, myself, but uh, that's okay. I, the guy that did it, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he did all right, so it doesn't matter who reads it, right? It's good, 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 good to live in the free, 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 free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSanctimonious.